Previously, Tessa unveiled the Model S sedan and now were active in looking for a factory to mass produce it. While in January of 2010, Tesla Motors received approval for up to a $465 million low interest loan from the US Department of Energy. And it was a program that was intended to accelerate the development of energy efficient cars. Um, and one of the, the prerequisites for um, being in this program was demonstrating that you're a going concern, um, which is why this program was inaccessible to uh, GM and Chrysler because they were bankrupt. By 2010, Tesla was actually in sort of a moderately healthy position and the, and the DOE energy efficiency program was meant to, to serve as a catalyst for the acceleration of energy efficient vehicles. The DOE loan program was there, um, our competitors were using it, so Ford, for example, got like five or six billion dollars from, from this program. Nissan got 1.6 billion dollars. Tesla for the Model S program got 380 million dollars. And then 100 million for a powertrain factory to supply other companies. Fisker, I think, got 500, they got more than we did, five or 600. So, I mean, of the names that you've heard of, Tesla actually got by far the least and, and I think did did quite a lot with those proceeds. But it's important, like, this, this was, was definitely helpful and served a catalytic purpose, purpose which was, it, it was the intent of the program, but it was not um, a case of sort of being, as some have accused, accused Tesla of being, of, of sort of being propped up by the government or, or something that was fundamentally necessary for Tesla to exist. It was helpful and catalytic, but not fundamental. The, the Daimler investment a year earlier was fundamental. Um, but, but not, not the DOE loan. I think something most people always seem to overlook was it was a loan. It wasn't a grant. So, I mean, this is obvious, perhaps in the name, but we have to pay it back. And you know, that was you know, yes. very different than the Daimler investment, you know, which was an equity investment in the company. Yes. So you know, this is something where we had to start planning on how we would pay that back and prove to them that we would pay it back. With interest. With interest over you know, the expected period of time, when, before we even could get the loan. So for the manufacturers that received loans, the question now is, who will be the most efficient with the use of capital, and who will pay it back? Of all the people that money will go to, and it will, it will be released, you have to say, who will make the most efficient use of capital? Who is going to be the best steward of the taxpayer uh, dollars in that loan program? Who is most likely to repay it? Who has demonstrated a better, uh, a more efficient use of capital? I think it's unequivocally us, I mean subjectively us. So while Tesla got their DOE loan, there was some news in Tesla's very own backyard regarding the Numi auto manufacturing plant. In just weeks, all this activity will grind to a halt. 4,700 jobs will disappear, as will California's only automobile assembly plant. And a unique joint venture between General Motors and Toyota, currently turning out Toyota Corollas and Tacoma trucks, will be officially dead. The two automakers have been building cars at the Fremont plant called NUMI since 1984. The idea of the joint operation was that GM would learn Japanese production methods from Toyota, and Toyota would learn how to operate in a U.S. environment. Over the years, NUMI workers rolled out some 8 million cars and trucks. Toyota says its decision to close NUMI is firm. So why exactly did Toyota decide to close down the NUMI auto manufacturing plant? Toyota had decided to, to shut down the, the NUMI facility. And, and it's understandable because it was half owned by GM, half owned by Toyota, and it was half owned by like the what was considered the bad portion of, of GM. GM got split into two pieces. One was called Li Liquidation Motors. So half of NUMI was owned by Liquidation Motors, half by Toyota. And it just sort of didn't make sense for Toyota to, to kind of be in that that kind of a partnership, so they decided to shut down the NUMI plant. Soon after, Tesla dropped some major news. Uh, this is indeed a, a super exciting day for, for Tesla. Um, I think one, one of the most exciting days uh, in, in Tesla history um, because we're, we're announcing this uh, historic partnership uh, with uh, Tesla and, and Toyota. Um, the, uh, it consists of three um, major uh, areas. Toyota is making a, an, an investment in Tesla. There is uh, going to be uh, also the, the NUMI plant. We will be uh, purchasing the NUMI, NUMI plant. 
uh, and making the Model S and other cars there. Um, and then thirdly, uh, <coughs> we're going to collaborate on uh, joint ventures in electric vehicles. So we're going to create some electric vehicles together. It's a great honor for, for Tesla to uh, uh, work with a, a company like Toyota. Thank you very much, Mr. Musk. I would also like to thank Governor Schwarzenegger for being with us today. As Mr. Musk mentioned, Tesla and Toyota agreed on partnership, including such areas as the development of electric vehicles. In addition, Toyota has decided to invest in Tesla. From now, we will begin discussing details, including how the partnership will be structured. Thanks for the introduction. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I think you. Uh, Elon point. is all frozen today. <laughs> he never got so much press attention in his life. But anyway, it's, it's uh, great to be here. And uh, um, Akio Toyota, thank you very much for coming over here. I know that you're still suffering from jet lag, just coming from Japan. But uh, it's great to have you here in our state. And uh, thank you for bringing this business to our state. We really appreciate it. And of course, uh, uh, Elon Musk, uh, who has been an extraordinary leader in car manufacturing, and uh, you know, we love his uh, cars. So let's have a closer look at the announcement details between Tesla and Toyota. Tesla receives the Numi plant in order to build the Model S sedan. Note, prior to the global financial crisis, the Numi plant was valued at around $1 billion. And how much did Tesla pay for it? Just $42 million. On top of that, Tesla would receive a $50 million investment from Toyota, giving Toyota a 2.5% stake in Tesla Motors. So in summary, Tesla literally gets the Numi plant for free, while Toyota gets the Numi plant off their books and a 2.5% equity stake in Tesla Motors. Next, Tesla needed equipment for stampings, paint and plastics, etc. in order to be able to commence manufacturing. And in another stroke of luck, Toyota and Liquidation Motors were unable to sell the Numi plant equipment as the market for used automotive equipment was non-existent in 2010. This put Tesla in a fortunate position and they were able to get a lot of used equipment for pennies on the dollar. In addition to completing the purchase of the Fremont factory from, from Numi, we've bought a great deal of equipment in stampings, paint, plastics, and so forth. In general, our approach here is to buy used equipment because the, the prices for used automotive manufacturing equipment are incredibly low at this point. So it's, we're literally paying pennies on the dollar in, in a lot of cases. In fact, in some cases, we've paid less than the scrap value of the, of the item because it would have cost more to, to move the item than to actually buy it. <laughs> so it's really been great as far as lowering our, our, the capital cost for production. And then, on October the 27th, it was finally time for Tesla to unveil their newest factory. You know, I, I really am a big believer in, in, in manufacturing, and um, I, 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 I like it personally. Um, I think it's sometimes people think of it as, as kind of just making copies, and it's but, but actually there's an enormous amount of, of innovation and engineering uh, that, that goes into uh, making a large quantity of something you know, perfectly every time. Um, and, uh, and so, it, it, and then having, having that close interaction of uh, engineering uh, and, and production, I think is also extremely important because we want to drive, really stay at the forefront of, of uh, innovation as far as uh, electric vehicles are concerned and continue to serve as a catalyst for the transition to a sustainable uh, energy future. Um, yeah, um, well, uh, we have a, a, a very big sign, um, <laughs> uh, and we're going to raise the curtain on the sign. Uh, Is there a this, this may take a while. Or something? <laughs> All right, oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I get a chill. Actually, yeah. that's great. Yeah, 
So while the global financial crisis almost killed Tesla back in 2009, it has now provided Tesla with a huge factory with a capacity to produce over half a million vehicles. Not to mention, Tesla now has partnerships to provide powertrains to both Toyota and Daimler, while also manufacturing and selling roadsters. In the next episode, Tesla takes the company public via an IPO to get the funds necessary to fit out the Fremont factory in preparation of producing the Model S sedan. And the story continues in the next episode. If you enjoyed the episode and want to help the channel, Patreon is the best way to do so. And also, a big thank you to all Patreon members and Ice Lake Investments for making this documentary series possible. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.